Okay, I just want to quickly run you through this code I have running here on the Arduino. It's been edited slightly to show you a few, uh, not really bugs, but um, improvements you can make that are already in the code, but this will show you what they're actually doing. So to start off, we just have a rotary encoder. If I rotate the knob, you can see on the serial monitor, it counts up forever as I spin it forever and it'll count down as I spin it down goes into the negatives everything but it works more or less so let's make an improvement so the improvement I want to make here is I don't like how on the serial monitor this is just constantly updating even if the volume doesn't change it's on updating constantly so let's only tell it to update if the volume changes not just always print it out so here we have our line where we print out the volume to the serum monitor let's bring this code back in where we're doing an if statement to check if the volume has changed then and only then print it out see how that works okay so this looks better it's only changing if I rotate the knob it's not going to continue to print 62 or 34, whatever I leave it at. It only prints out if I make a change. And I mentioned in the blog post why this is a useful thing to do. So what else can we do? Let's try and restrict the value. I have the variable being changed here as volume. So a volume knob. You don't necessarily want the volume to go down to the negatives or up infinitely let's just restrict the value to 0 and 100 seems like a pretty good value so let's make that change okay so to make that change we need to find where we're actually incrementing and decrementing the volume that's done in the interrupt routine here with our two if statements we're incrementing or decrementing depending on the direction we're turning the rotary cord or the direction we determine when we've rotated it so let's add another check where let's not increment the volume variable even if we are rotating it clockwise if we're over 100 so only increment if we're under 100 and the same for if we're rotating counterclockwise don't decrement volume below zero see how that works okay so when I turn the knob we're going up and we've stopped at 100 Let's go down. Yep. Don't go below zero, which is good. Another improvement we can do, and it requires me to show you the button function of this encoder first. We have in our loop, we're going to check the button state. And if it sees that the button has been pressed, well, let's just print out buttons pressed and we'll reset the volume value to zero. So let's let's look how that works. Let's bring the volume to about 44 and we'll push the button. Okay, so that's pretty crazy. But you can see, register the button press, reset the volume to zero. But it also registered, you know, some 20 odd button presses. So we need to slow that down. And instead of slowing it down, what we'll actually do is remember the previous state. And if the previous state is that the button was pressed, we'll assume that we're still pressing the button and ignore that as a button press. So what we do there is when we check the pin for the button on the encoder, we'll also add a check for the last button state. And if it's the same as the previous one, we know we're still holding the button don't make any changes or register another button press. Okay, so change the volume around. Looks good. Push the button. Reset the volume back to zero. Push it again. Better. If I hold it down, only registers one button press. 
but I'm still getting multiple button presses and what's happening there is the button debounced so we need to put in a delay that actually counteracts that get rid of this commented code I have a 60 millisecond delay in here and let's let's bring that in and see what happens with our code so we're pushing the button we're only registering one at a time so that seems to be a long enough delay to skip reading the bounces of the contacts when I press it just once so looks good and yeah as I'm pushing the button there's a bit of movement on the actual rotation of the encoder so that it jumps around a little bit but that seems to have been enough of a delay that um, yeah, button's working pretty good. One final thing I wanted to show you. If you really look close on the video, you'll see the detents. When I just start rotating it, it actually jumps to a very specific spot. This encoder has 24 detents on it in one full 360 degree rotation. You can see it jumps into each detent as I rotate it. But what I want to show you with that is if you look at the actual volume, if I do one full rotation, all 24 detents, you see the volume is at 96. So there's 90, it registered 96 different um, changes on the, uh, on the encoder outputs. And I'll bring that right back in the reverse direction, we're at zero. So that tells me there's 24 detents. And if you look on the data sheet, there's also 24 pulses per rotation. Now in that one pulse on the two outputs of the encoder pins, you have that gray code output. And the two outputs are basically slightly time shifted square waves and you get a four bit gray code signal out of one pulse so you do the multiplication there four bits over 24 pulses per rotation you end up with 96 specific uh, states in a single rotation which makes sense why when we do a complete rotation here we end up with a volume of 96 and do a complete rotation back we're back to zero